data. Good, good. So uh, I just said to some students who arrived earlier that there is something, there is a Word document if you go to uh, to the module actually, e-learning module about login. That there is a document that's the document you need to solve lab part today's lab. This is the one you need. This is the thing we'll be working on for today. There is some real data. This is some real data, and uh, we use uh, someone has his mic on, so please switch off your mic. Let me probably do it myself. I can mute you all. Ah, good. So before we start, let me explain a few concepts, mathematical foundations, how we wa how we can work out what are the number of layers and what are the velocities of these layers, as well as how we can determine the thicknesses of different layers what the velocity can tell us. The velocity is actually having some relation to the lithology, to the rock typing. Is it a sandstone? Is it a limestone? Is it a hard rock? So the velocity can be used to infer actually uh, the lithology of the rocks. It's not one-to-one -one relationship. It's hard actually relationship because many different rocks can have the same velocity. The physical property within the rock is actually widely varying. So to determine actually the rock type based on the velocity is not a direct relationship. It's not one-to-one -one relationship. There are some understanding again. So who can help us? The one who knows about the geology, who visited the location, who have some concept conceptual model about the area, then they are the best people who can tell, is my interpretation right or wrong? Never the least, uh, you know, common tuition can, can tell us whether I'm doing something bad or correct. If the velocities I'm getting are above something which is normal, then definitely what I'm doing is totally wrong. For example, there is no velocity of rock above, for, for example, 20 kilometers per second. Two, two, uh, 2,000, sorry, not 20. 20 ki yeah, 20 kilometers per second, but 2,000 meters per second. So there is no velocity actually of any rock that's above 20,000 meters per second or 20 kilometers per second. So for today, um, I, I need you to get the lab, first of all. The lab is available for you in, uh, in uh, uh, let me just make some switching here. I need to bring this one here, the PowerPoint in the other screen. I try my best. Okay, let me see how I can view slideshow. Uh, then this is use the presenter. Maybe this is better. Let's see. Yeah, that's good because we want to see my toolbar. That's better. So I can scroll and change which part I'm viewing. Stop sharing. And I share again, but share the other screen. Yeah, this is better. This is way better. So today we have actually a document. That document explains what are the steps you have to follow actually to solve the lab today. The lab has this data. These are the data we collected from a field. If I ask you a quick question, 
how many geophones you think are there how many geophones are used to record this data who can give me a quick answer we can see Victor. we can you can't see nothing sure Victor. yes we can't uh, see really make sure because i'm sharing my screen that's what i see just black screen is it no i, <clears throat> I can't see it Victor. it's clear for me Lath can see. Sure, I, can I can see it myself. Who can see as well? Also, yes, I can, I can see. I can see. I can see the Thanks, thanks. Thanks for the comfort. It's clear. It's totally clear. I can see my screen as well. So I got, I received uh, a, an answer from Sumaya. She's saying five. And that's uh, not actually true i have more than five so how many traces are there how many wiggles how many different wiggles are there do you think how many geophones are there somebody saying 12 12 12 that's true that's the first wiggle another wiggle another wiggle those are wiggles these are traces those traces are recorded by different geophones. Geophone 1, geophone 12. And there is a spacing between them. So the geez, these geophones actually, they were uh, planted on the surface of the ears. So if I make a whiteboard explaining to you how they work, start a new whiteboard, send it to everybody. So this is how they look like. I basically have a source somewhere. Let's say, assume that this is the source. And there are 12 geophones. One, two, so on up until 12. One until 12. One, one two, three, four, and so on until 12. And these are the layers. They, these planted on the surface of the earth as the first layer probably a second layer and so on i send an energy the energy get reflected that's the reflection it goes also straight that's the direct this is the reflection or it goes critically let's make the critical a different color So let's assume that this is the critical. Critical goes like that in the second layer, and it transmits or sends what we call head waves, wavelets. These are wavelets. Gets recorded. So the energy once it once it arrives this tray, this uh, geophone is start recording. So the first one is up there. The energy is zero. That thing arrived. It takes some time for the energy to go down and reflected back or refracted back. Once it starts getting received, we will receive a wiggle. We start seeing some shaking. And that's exactly what I see. So shaking started here, here, and so on. That's where the shaking started. So how it works, how I can find out those, the necessary parameters, how I can tell what are the number of layers using this data, what are the velocities of these layers, as well as uh, how thick each layer is. So before we start the lab, let's go revise what we studied the last few slides. Uh, I remember I said to you that whenever I send an energy to the ground, the energy travels in different directions, in different uh, paths. One of the simplest paths is the direct. It's directly traveling from the source on almost the first layer and getting received in many receivers or geophones. That's one type of energy. We call it direct energy. There is another energy. That's what we call refraction. A refraction goes hit the interface, get reflected back. 
for the refraction uh let me do some pen the angle of incident and angle of refraction those angles are equal using snell's law we can tell that one angle of incident and angle of refraction or oh, reflection sorry are the same that's another energy type that's what we call a reflected energy and this is another chapter that's the next chapters finally uh refracted ray the refracted is the one which travels at at the second or in the interface between the first and the second layer that's the interface it's moving in the second layer it's emitting energy based on hydrogen principles every point is shaking and those shaking will emit what we call wavelets or head wave they send head waves to the surface that's how they travel back to the surface as head waves and that's one ray one refracted ray is traveling back to this geophone so we receive also refraction in this chapter we are only dealing with refracted energy we want to use this energy record it and try to use it to locate how many uh, uh, layers are there what are the velocities of these layers and also how thick are these layers so how they will look like in real data how i can use them so the direct ray the direct energy this is the one which is traveling straight from source to a couple of receivers its energy or its behavior behavior is a straight line if i plot the energy in time versus distance time versus distance time in in y-axis distance is in uh, x-axis if i compare it to this data which axis you think is time and which axis could be the distance if we assume that this is x-axis and that's y-axis what is the x-axis distance that's the time actually so it's this is time that's yes it's almost like that so this is time this is distance i haven't plotted distance i just plotting the the the, uh, the number of jufun jufun one two three four five and so on it's this is exactly similar to what you see uh here so this is time that's distance these two things are similar but you go back to the first slide uh, sorry uh, first part here pick the p wave arrival we are uh, interested right now only on the p wave how i can pick it where is the p wave where is the first energy is it here is it here for this trace where is the energy at what time the energy arrived to this geophone geophone one is it here is it here that's here is it it's around 10 seconds it's close to 10 seconds so if you need to pick it you need to pick it here I take a screenshot of this one snipping tool. Mm. So if I'm requested to pick it, here is it. That's the time it take for the energy to arrive. So is this energy arrived to this? Is it reflection? Is it direct? or is it refracted that's something we need to determine as well then for the second trace where is the energy where is the first arrival energy here is it then that's the one 
Here is it. Here is it. So I'm I'm picking the first arrivals. That's what I call. So if I I connect them by lines, that's the first one. Um, doctor. Yes. Uh, for the headphones around ten and eleven, twelve. Why did you pick the arrival time at that point? Why not uh, on the first you mean? vibration? Yeah. Is that noise? Oh, that's yes. That's noise. This okay. is noise. And why the noise is higher in late G phones than early G phones? Why there is more noise in later G phones? In these G phones 12, 11 than G phone 1, 2? Who can answer me? Why do you think there is more noise? No, there is more noise because the source, where do you think is the hammer? Where do you think is the hammer here, here, or here? Where close do you to think? Number one. Close to number Behind one. Behind you. Yes, it's close to where Jufun 1 is. It's close to where Jufun 1 is. I'm looking back to my, uh, yeah. So Jufun, this is, so this one will generate, it gives you, uh, let me change, it give you some energy like that. straight line then wiggle and uh, this one it takes deeper time straight line a wiggle and so on straight line then a wiggle it takes some time for the energy whatever energy is it is it direct uh, reflected or refracted it takes some time i'm just picking the first arrivals so on for this one because the source is closer to this jufun the energy arrives first here it takes more time to travel from the source to the last, latest Jufun, past last Jufun, Jufun number 12, the farther away, uh, away Jufun. It takes much more time to reach to this Jufun. And that's the reason you see the arrival time is shorter, is least compared to here. So what do you do then? After this step, what is the next step? We go back, draw lines. These are the lines. Excuse me, doctor. Yes. Could you please repeat what's the causes for the noises? The noises, um, again, because the source is closer to this one. Yani, mm, mm. The source, this Jufun, I expect will be least noisy than this Jufun. There is least noise in Jufun number one. Then this this one has some shaking here earlier before the energy arrives. Um, uh, it's similar to what if I'm talking, if I assume that here I'm talking and someone is nearby to me, let's assume that Abdullah, you asked the question thing. Let's assume that you are here, I'm here, and some of your colleagues is far away. Who will be able to listen to me clearly, more clearly? One or 12? One. Definitely. So the energy was when it goes into the rock, if someone is playing, let's assume there are some kids behind there, they are playing football, they are generating their own noises. So when this energy tells it arrives here, it already got lost due to what we call, uh, you don't need to know this terminology, intrinsic attenuation and spherical uh, spreading or spherical divergence. You don't need to know these things, but I'm just, uh, since you asked the question, but the main concept is that if those, I'm talking that two persons, I want these two persons to listen to me only, not those kids. But those kids are generating noises. They are playing or they are shouting. My voice might not reach the farther away person. What I can do 
to increase the signal to noise ratio <coughs> instead for example of hammer i use a bigger hammer i use a vibrator or else as we discussed in the previous slides in the introduction part we need to do vertical stacking i need to hammer not one time many times it's almost like i shoot i keep shouting calling you many times abdullah 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 so tell you can hear me it's the same concept here so the guy uh, the one of your colleagues just said that why why the, it's this is why not here this is what we consider noise whereas the energy is somewhere farther away so the energy is the first energy is arriving here i'm seeing that it's deflecting i'm seeing that there is a deflection so this is how i pick but before that let's go to some fundamentals some basic things how the equations can be used i will not ask you to derive the equations at least for this course so let's try to answer these questions uh first of all the direct energy the energy which travels directly from the source to any geophone it should pass through the origin it should pass between distance zero and time zero so it's not usually a continuous line there are many geophones this is my hammer and there is one geophone another geophone another geophone and so on so these geophones it start receiving the energy like that i picked here this geophone start receiving the energy like that this one one energy another energy another energy so it received three energies this is the first energy that's the first arrival so at this distance the distance which this geophone have been planted in the direct energy is actually the first to get received at some geophone probably here what energy will be arrived first is it direct refracted or reflected which of these three energies will arrive first to this geophone is it direct refracted or reflected direct huh what do you think? that's the refracted this is a refracted ray at least from what i see this is a refracted this is this one so this is this one that's the one which is arriving to this geophone. All of these geophones direct is the first. In this specific distance, what we call critical distance, a refraction will appear, but they are not the first. So at this distance, this is the first distance they appear. If there is a geophone here, this distance I call it critical distance because there is critical refraction this is the critical angle that's the angle we discussed earlier that's the critical angle start appearing here the critical energy will start getting appearing at this distance before this distance there is no critical no critical energy no critical refraction so before this there is nothing it's dashed line see from here to here that's a dashed line no critical refraction critical refraction appears only after critical distance this is critical but they are not the first who is the first this energy is the first this energy is still the first at her the direct energy is the first the energy traveling straight from juf from source to jufun is the first may i ask a question 
does the reflected energy will ever be the first to get received from at least this graph no doctor never ever yeah that's true so the refracted that's the one at critical distance a refracted reflected and refracted they will arrive simultaneously at this exact this point why is that because this could be considered as a reflection as well as a critical reflect refraction at this distance yet at here this point at this distance direct is the first to arrive when at what distance refracted will be the first what is the distance what that distance is called refracted energy will be the first to be received what is the name of that distance crossover yes that's the distance crossover after crossover which energy is the first refracted energy this energy is the first this is the first arrive that's the time axis zero and the time is increasing upward so which is the first to arrive yeah definitely at that time exactly there is a jufun here this jufun first will record the refracted so reflection is never the first to arrive direct is the first before the crossover and at critical distance a refraction will appear so if there is a jufun here if there is two jufun let's assume there there is one here and the other one here this will jufun assuming that there is no noise this is straight line oh an energy arrived another energy arrived this is direct whereas this one is reflection a reflection not refraction there is no refraction here for this one or let's make it here so you see the difference that's a straight line that's direct refraction reflection three different pulses there are three one two three but yani, why you see if you say okay Khalil why this is not like that yeah there are many reasons and yani, seismic signal is not that clean it's very big clean, the um, wavelet um, we'll come back to that probably later yeah consider that there is a wiggle there is one wiggle there are three wiggles there are three different wiggles so my question why this energy why this energy going in the second layer oh, second layer why this one might arrive here before than the direct why what's the reason behind this path going down traveling here returning back is fast is shorter time than the direct one the straight path who can tell me i think because uh, the velocity in the second layer is faster than True. the first on the top yes yes that's the reason the velocity in the second layer is way faster than the velocity in the first layer so it's traveling here slowly it traveled this distance yes but it's traveling so fast in the other in the other layer in the second layer so at some point it will overcome the direct energy at one point at some distance that distance is exactly what we call crossover distance so uh, the direct energy is a straight line the energy is a straight line 
Refracted is also a straight line. Reflection is not a straight line. Reflection, you will know later that it's what we call in reflection chapter, it's a hyperbola. It's a, a function what we call hyperbola. There is a function also parabola. You studied calculus two probably or calculus one. This is what we call hyperbola. It's a hyperbolic. And it never touches the direct. It's asymptotic to the direct. It's asymptotic. Why it's asymptotic? Asymptotic, it means those two lines, they never touch, but they get very close to each other. In math, we call this function or uh, this behavior asymptotic. So how Is they look like? Barlar. Yes. Hmm? They are barlar to each other. They not parallel they get a closer parallel is always uh, some specific distance away but they are not parallel but i mean they, they never touch or cross the they never touch yes they never touch they are asymptotic so what's the reason behind that the reason is simple if i draw just this line this this line goes straight it goes like that the difference here is larger the difference between these two becomes smaller at very far distance away the difference becomes smaller 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 so they becomes the, these two lines the direct energy and refracted energy they start getting closer to each other so at for example very far distance very let's assume that this is very big this is the direct and this is the reflected. They are almost close to each other. They are asymptotic. Uh, sorry, my drawing is bad, but yeah, this let's assume this is very, very thin layer extending for indefinitely. This is the direct, whereas this is the reflection. So reflection get asymptotic. You see, it's asymptotic. It's getting closer, closer to the direct. The refraction will never start at origin. Refraction, because refraction needs the critical distance to appear. It will never appear at origin. It needs some distance to start appearing. And that distance is what we call cross, or sorry, critical distance needs the critical distance to start appearing becomes the first to appear after crossover distance so uh, a reflected are refracted they never start at origin also reflected never start because if i want to record here at this at this point if i put a geo phone exactly where the source is this is the source i put a geo phone how much time it takes for the reflected energy to arrive to this geophone the time can be calculated as such it's the energy which goes down and reflects back the energy goes down get reflected back so it depends on the thickness of this layer and also the velocity of this layer the energy goes down returns back so it's it's never start at zero. The line never goes zero, but it, it's like that. Take some time to arrive. 2H, 2H over V. Because it goes down and returns back. So it's 2H divided by V. That's the time. The time at where if there is a source and receiver exactly here. As if there is a source and receiver exactly at this point, this is where the reflection happens. The reflection will happen. If there is a source, a receiver exactly at this point, this is where at zero, zero, the direct. The direct is the energy directly from source to Jufun. If these two are just attached to each other, there is zero time for the energy to arrive to the, to the receiver. But at this time, there is no refraction. I don't see a refraction at this time. That's the reason. 
And I already uh, answered the last question why reflected ray is asymptotic with direct ray that has been answered. So to work out the direct the, the direct ray, if that's the energy traveling from the source to any receiver, we assume there are indefinite number of receivers, a lot of receivers, and we pick those times, energy times, this is one time, uh, sorry, uh, one in a trace, another trace, another trace. I keep picking them, connecting them by a line. Connecting them by a line. So what I get, I get this straight line. And this straight line is connecting through the origin, going through the origin. This is the distance axis, and that's the time axis. Uh, my question, how I can find the velocity if this is my data? That's what I collect. How can I find the velocity of the first layer using this plot? This plot is, by the way, is called TX diagram. T time, X distance diagram. How I can find the velocity of the first layer? Velocity One over slope. Equal, uh, X over T. X over T, yes. It's one over slope. That's one one over slope. And how I can find the slope? Slope is change in time, change in time, over change in distance. Change in uh, the x and the y axis over change in the x axis. But um, since you, you know that it's the slope, you, you just take two points. You can work out change in what's the x this x minus this x this time minus this time sorry this time minus this time this time minus this time and this x over this x gives you what we call the velocity that's the direct velocity that's how we work out the direct for reflection, reflection is a bit more complex. We will not go to the, the details of the equations because there is a, a, a dedicated chapter for reflection technique. But at least at zero offset, at an offset where source and receiver are exactly at the same points, we can calculate what is uh, the time. What is the time for this? When, uh, how much time it takes for the energy to go down and get returned back and get recorded at a phone planted where the source is, it can be calculated as such. It's the, ta it's the, uh, the time it takes for the energy to go down and return back. It means 2H. H is the thickness. H is the thick thickness. So it, the time goes down and returns back, divided by the velocity of this layer. That's the time, that's this time. That intercept time. Doctor? Yes. Uh, can go back to the previous uh, slide? Yes. And uh, the other one, the previous one. Yes, uh, on the above table, there is a, a dash uh, line. What does it represent? Here. Below this dash line? Yes. Uh, we'll come back. Why we need this dash line? There is a dash line. We This is a straight line also. Refracted energy is also straight line. Or direct is also straight line. These two are straight line. We use this to find the intercept time, the y intercept, this time. We try to connect it with the y axis to locate what is the intercept intercept time. The, because this intercept time can be used to find what's the thickness of the layer using the refraction technique. That's the next, thanks for the question. It's, uh, it seems that you are following with me, but this is the thing we will discuss soon. So uh, we'll discuss soon about why we need this dashed line. That's the intercept time. 
So the, the, the refracted energy, that's how it travels. It goes. It never appears here. There is no refraction here or critical refraction here. There is no until up until to this distance. This distance is called critical distance. It's exactly this distance. This x is equal to this x. These two are equal. That's what we call critical distance. That's the distance. Critically refracted energy will start appearing, but it's not the first. Which is the first? The direct. The direct here is the first to arrive to the geophone. So the direct, the red line is the first here, at least. So if there is a geophone, the geophone will record first the, the direct. Then it records the in at least in critical there is um, there is what we call reflection as well as critical refraction so this is the equation of this line what is it the equation of direct that's the equation of the direct at least the time the time equation of the direct is that but the equation of a refracted energy first refracted is that x over velocity of the second layer plus 2h h is the thickness of the first layer h1 multiplied by square root of 1 over velocity of first layer squared minus 1 over velocity of the second layer squared so this is what I call the equation of refracted energy. I don't use usually all this equation. I use only this equation. So this equation is made up of two parts, first part and the intercept time. This is the intercept time. This time is this one. This is there are two time. This time plus the intercept time. Intercept time is this time uh Sumaya was talking about just right now. So this is what we call intercept time. It's equal to that. So for this simple case. If I'm asked to know what is the velocity of first layer and the velocity of the second layer, what is the velocity of the first layer? How I can work out what is the velocity of the first layer? From where I can get the velocity of the first layer? By the T. Let me clean everything so it may becomes clear to you. How I can get, I need this information, V1 v2 and they also need h1 thickness of this layer i can't get the thickness of the second layer because this is very indefinite large layer i assume so how i get the th velocity of first layer the velocity of first layer can be obtained by the slope of the direct that's what we said one over v one that's the loop. the velocity of the second layer can be found from first refraction one over v2 if there are three layers a different layer down below you will get a different refraction layer this gives you one over v if there is a V3, if there is. So velocities are obtained. How I can get the thickness then? How I get this H1 from the intercept? This time I can get it. It's written there in my plots. Intercept I equated with this one, this equation. I already know velocity one. I already know velocity two. What's remaining? H1. 
So that's how you. You have a question? I, mean, I think we can use Fida or or is it same? Um, no. You just need to use these equations, not Fita Gors. Fita Gors is somehow used in the background to achieve these equations. That's the reason I say that I will not, not ask you to derive the equations, either this one or this one. Good? It's good. Yeah, uh, it's in the background how we drive these equations. Yeah, Fita Gors theorem was involved there. But uh, no, you just need to use the qu av av available equations, what is already available. So to find the thickness, just get this time. You don't know this. You you are not given the, the model. You are given the data. These are the data. So from the data, you read the time intercept. You connect this line with dashed one. That's the reason I, I haven't answered. Uh, that uh, why we uh, or haven't discussed wh what is the intercept. That's the intercept. I connect or extend the refraction line to the y axis, get the time intercept equated with this one. I already know what is V1 from the slope of direct line. line. What is the velocity of the second layer from the first refraction? That's the refraction line, green line, gives me V2. And uh, I need only to work out what is H1. That's the remaining. My question, I have a quick question. Based on this equation, when this will not be uh, applicable, when a square root will not be gives you an error in real numbers. When this will not work, square root, when it will, does not work. If it was a negative. It's negative. If there is a negative value, that's a complex number. Negative square root, in real numbers, there is no negative. So when this will become negative, if velocity one is larger than velocity two, if velocity one, if the layer of first layer have a higher velocity than the second layer, a refraction will not work. That's true. Refraction will not work whenever the higher, the upper layers have a higher velocity than deeper layers. That's one of the drawbacks of refraction technique. That's something we'll discuss again later. But refraction will not work. And that's the reason also why reflection is more common, why it's more appropriate, why we use reflection, not refraction, for oil exploration. Definitely, we, we might encounter some layer, upper layer, having a lower velocity than, or sorry, higher velocity than deeper layers. If there is a layer, upper layer, having a higher velocity than deeper layers, a refraction technique will not work. It will not receive refractions. At, at least from that higher velocity layer, shallower higher velocity layer. So uh, this is what the data, that's similar to what you see here. I just uh, flipped it. It's like that. So your task is to pick the first arrivals as what I did here. Pick, pick, pick. And that's the same thing here. Those are the real data. You need to go pick the first energy. You connect them through a line. So I cannot, I cannot connect it like that. I cannot connect it like that because I missed some points. It's your judgment how to connect them, how to connect them with different segments. The first line, the first segment, segment is definitely the direct. The second segment is the velocity from the second layer. 
is the refraction first refraction so in this case this is the data if i need to expect the real model the earth model i, I expect that there are two layers v1 v2 and v2 is uh, the layer 2 is indefinite it's large that's that's how i can represent it so we use the slope of direct and refraction to get the velocities of respective layer. First layer, the velocity can be obtained from the direct. Second layer, the velocity can be obtained from first refraction. And if there is another refraction like that, it gives you the velocity of the third layer. One over slope. And how you work them out, you just uh, get two points, calculate what's the difference in, the, in time and difference in distance, find out the velocities. So we found out the velocities. We need to get also the thickness. The thickness can be obtained by extending this line. Here is a dash, connecting it to the y-axis, trying to find what is the intercept time and equating this value the intercept time with this equation. We already have velocities and we need to work out what's the thickness. So these are the equation we use. Um, maybe I need to just remove this card. Maybe I need to remove this equation because one is enough. This for you. And uh, yeah, that's how is it. If it's complex, that's how you connect them. We have two branches. This is direct. This is refraction. This gives you the velocity of the first layer. This gives you the velocity of the second layer. If I connect them by a line, this gives me the intercept time. I use the intercept of time to get the thickness of the first layer. That's how is it. So for multiple layers, that's for if they are multiple layers and all of them, they are horizontal. This is how they look like. First, this is direct. Refraction one. This is the one. It's traveling here. That gives you this layer. It goes like that. So this one gives you this energy traveling in the second layer and emitting what we call head waves. Uh, those head waves are recorded by the geophones on the surface that gives you this line. And this is the intercept one. If I have another layer, that's the intercept. This is the refracted two. If this is refraction two, this is the refraction line two. It gives you the velocity of the third layer. Refraction two gives you the velocity of the third layer. Direct gives you the velocity of the first layer. A refraction one gives you the velocity of the second layer. A refraction two gives you the velocity of the third layer. And final refractions, if I have four layers, this gives me the velocity of the fourth layer. That's the third refraction. One refraction, second, third. And how I can work out the velocities for at least, uh, let's say, three layer case. So uh, this is the time. That's the total equation of the time for refraction. I can work out the velocity using the sloops. Just get two points, work out the velocity. Two points, what's the time difference? So, sorry, x difference and time difference again here. So what you observe, you observe the gentler the sloop, the gentler the sloop, what happens to the velocity if the loop is gentle? The velocity will increase. Yeah, becomes higher, higher, higher. Because short time, in very short time, large distance. Large time, small distance. It means it's slow. Large time for just small distance. 
whereas for this one it's very fast take has taken short time to travel large distance so this is the, the the deepest layer we assume that the velocity is increasing as we go deeper so what how we get the velocity we get the velocity as i said using these uh, sloops and for first layer to get the thickness that's we use this one this equation just re rewrite it in this form rewrite this one in this form try to get h h is simply what one of uh, mm, this our time the intercept time this intercept time is this one divided by two times these parameters the, with the thing under the square root what's the variables v1 v2 we already calculated them if you want to calculate this one becomes a bit complex so i need two terms first tier and also another tier this term is exactly from intercept one plus that's one this is exactly intercept one plus v2 squared v3 squared what about this one what about this one for this one i add another term if i want the thickness of the second layer that's uh that's this gives you the thick, sorry thickness of the first layer thickness of the second layer thickness of the third layer one thickness of the third layer this is 2 h 3 1 over v 3 squared minus 1 over v 4 squared so from where what's the what's the thing missing here i already calculated this one from here from my data h is calculated already from here i know or only or you can just put this intercept you can bring this intercept put it here that's this value this is equal to this value total value and here what's remaining remaining h2 that's what's remaining so let's go back to the slides let's go back here so you need first to pick the p wave arrival times and make them you need first to pick them this is the data you are given you need to draw something similar to what i did here that's the first part then you need to bring it for example uh, you need to print it that's easiest part then you need probably to draw lines connect them by lines so this is first layer for my shape let's make it thicker that's the first one let me draw another one that's the color uh insert uh, shapes uh, that's the second one second one goes like that format yes that's the second one the first one and what about the last one that's what i see is the last one the final one and you definitely need to con connect them to there so you at least record the you can get what is the intercept time so for this one let's make it a different color yes go ahead nasser uh, you have doctor, any i have questions here in the from the graph in the bottom of the number one yes when they you have a q phone here uh, near the red 
the red color. Yes. It should not. It should be after is not before the amplitude uh, black. Uh, uh, what do you mean? Is that the... correct? What I'm doing right? What about now? Not from the bottom. From the down. Number one. Yeah. Uh... No, it should be extending a bit. It should not be like that. It should be extending where the zero is. That's the zero point is. No, I mean, I mean the the, the in the graph the the one number one, in the bottom. Uh huh. Yes. Not in the up. What's... The down, down, down. Yes, that's one. No. That's one, two, three, eleven, four. Eleven. And... Maybe eleven. Yes. That's eleven. that's eleven. Yes. 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 Will be go go near the red color. This noise it not should the red color before. After. No, it should it should not be here. No, it, it should, should be after be after the red colors. Because this the is the noise. You mean? Yes. Yes. Mm, it could be slightly yeah, but that's fine. <laughs> yeah that's fine the most important you need to uh make those uh that's good observation Nasser, but that's still fine the most important is that your line should be connecting them yeah and should be going through all those points you the line you draw should be trying to connect through them all so doctor so if the, i the, make the... one of them if i make this one above Mm, yeah, will be will I be might... No, it's fine. It's totally fine. That's totally fine. What I did. <laughs> but but doctor, but is this uh, this will be fine? But to, sometimes if uh, in the exams or in the questions, maybe in the company to, tomorrow will be have jobs. Will be do it like uh, if they are any noisy. The... This is not. This is not noise, by the way. I don't think that this is a noise. So what that? This is just we we whenever we plot this the plot type this they call it wiggle. So here I have also black. So whenever I plot something, usually uh, uh, let me show you the plot types. Uh, if there is a plot like that, um. In plotting in seismic, I, this is one type of plot. They call it wiggle. And there is another plot, variable area. Variable area, anything, for example, above or positive part of zero, we color it. Oh, OK. Yeah, here we color. We color. That's, this is just for visualization. This is a type of coloring. Here we color above zero or the opposite. It's not necessarily that this is zero. Sorry, this is a noise. The coloring oh, okay. means this is above. Above, uh, it's a posit It's a peak. It's a positive deflection, not negative. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's the reason. Thank you. That's not necessarily that this is a noise. Yeah. Good. So that's how you do. You connect them with lines as I did in here. And the first thing you need to work out what is the velocities. Velocity, this gives you this line, black line gives you the velocity of the first layer. This gives you the velocity of the second layer. This gives you the velocity of the third layer. And you need to use these equations. I gave you this one so you plot them. You can plot them as a TX diagrams, dots, and connect them if you wish. So you need then uh, to use this. This is the equation which is you use to get the velocities because it's change in distance over change in time gives you the velocity. Then uh, you you already calculated the velocities. Then you can get the thickness. Thickness of H1 is the intercept time of H1, which is what? Which is this time. That's the time. 
you get it from here whatever time that is you get it i need i don't need to tell you maybe it's 10 maybe it's 11 so um, that's the time here and your velocity you already obtained from uh, part five you plug them here v1 v2 v1 is obtained from direct v2 is obtained from uh, this layer blue layer or blue line a refraction one this is a refraction one this is a refraction two a fraction two gives you uh, the velocity of the third layer this gives you the velocity of the second layer the dark gives you the velocity of the first layer so uh, that's how you get the thickness of the first layer the thickness of the second layer can be obtained using this equation this is the equation from the slide itself you already obtained this one or this is in total is this intercept time it's basically this intercept time whatever you read here you plug it you plug it here and you already calculated the slopes from part five you get uh you what's remaining you read this one from your data the data table here is it intercept two that intercept two that's intercept two. You read it from where you read it from there and plug it here. What's remaining? What the only thing is remaining is H2 thickness of the second layer. Oh, sorry. Th uh, yeah, thickness of the second layer. That's thickness of the first layer. That's thickness of the second layer. So it means that in this case, <coughs> in this simple case, I have this such a model v1 v2 v3 can i get the, the thickness of the third layer no it's indefinite that's the model we have so this is the thickness of the first layer h1 that's the thickness of the second layer h2 it's thickness not the depth h H2 is actually the thickness, not the depth. So you need to calculate the depth between layer two and layer three. You need to calculate this depth from here up until here. That's layer two and layer three. Simply add these two. H1, H2 gives you the velocity, or sorry, the thickness or the depth to this interface. So actually, what's interesting here, you need to guess what is the geology. Yani you get three layers. Each layer has a specific velocity. And one of those is saturated soil. The velocity is close to a saturated soil. One of those layers, its velocity is close to the saturated soil velocity. So it contains, what do you think it contains? Saturated soil? Water. Water. That's by its perception. It's a saturated soil, so it probably contains water. Within that rock, I probably will have water. If I'm asked to drill, find water, that's my target. I need to reach that depth that layer i need to drill within that layer so here is here is the final part yani try to guess where is that sewer rock column and try to find um, how much you need to drill to find the water interesting so uh some of you said, could you extend Khali the submission time? Yes, I can extend it. Let's make it, uh, it's, uh, it's right now is on Thursday. Let's make it Saturday, two more days, end of Saturday. I will not go through all of it by myself. I give you the concept. I gave you already the concept. 
I think you are right now have the knowledge to solve it yourself. My task is to explain things to you, clarify the things to you, go through the points. Your task is to solve and work the the lab yourself. Doctor? Yes. If we face any issue during solving the lab, can we ask you? Can you contact Definitely. You? Definitely. Anytime. Anytime. If you have any problem, do you think anything is not clear to you? How to use the equations? Uh, I'm available all the time. So here, um, you first step is picking the velocity. I did it already. So I pick the velocity. That's the one, how uh, the procedure I followed. It. It's already there. It's already here. So your task is just to uh, get or read numbers, get two points along to the, this line, work out what's the difference between the y-axis and x-axis or the opposite to get the slope v1 v2 v3 v1 is the intercept of slope yes yes nasser go ahead uh doctor i have two questions one of the theory and one of the lab mm -hmm. the first question of the theory why the bb waves are uh, arrival before the s waves because our two two uh two this type of the wave is the direct um, first of all, we are not considering any S waves here, at least for this lab. S waves never arise before the P wave. Never ever. It's and what's the reason behind that? Why P wave is faster? Because uh, it's related to the particle motion behavior. How the particle motion is with respect to the wave propagation direction. It's by definition, by knowledge, easier to go back and forth and shake like that and go forward. It's easy, so you can go faster. Whereas if I keep jumping up and down and walking, I might be slower. This wave, that's how it moves. It keeps jumping. It's moving as it's jumping, so it's slower. So mm -hmm. I'm not considering S wave. If there is an S wave, direct S wave, I expect it might arrive here. It might arrive here, but there is a, a catch here. What is that? I'm in this case, at least I'm using geophones. I use a geophone. So let me clear the frame. This is my source. Here is the geophone. Geophone has only one sensor, vertical sensor. So the energy goes, the, the energy is going like that, coming back. It's coming like that. The S, the P wave moves like that. It's moving in the direction of propagation. What do you think this sensor will record? Will it record the S wave, which is moving side to side? No. No. The P wave is the energy we most definitely will record, whereas S wave might not be recorded by uh -huh. this sensor. Yeah. And for refraction, we don't use complex geophones with three sensors. No, we use only geophones with one vertical sensor for refraction application. Also, also for oil exposure, we usually mm -hmm. can doctor will be added the another reasons about the energy. The B will be not loses much more the energy like the S wave if you have jump and downs. Yeah, that's true. That's uh, attenuation within S wave is larger than the attenuation than P wave. Okay, okay. That's okay. another reason. No, okay, it's clear. Yes. And then, doc uh, Doctor, another question about uh, the critical distance here. Is it can be con considered this is the the critical reflect refract? Uh, yeah, a critical refraction. If there is a critical refraction, we will receive critical energy. 
critical energy will always there will be there as long as velocity is increasing with with the depth deeper we go mm -hmm. the velocity is larger if there is a case that a velocity one of the layers have a a shallower smaller velocity or larger velocity than deeper ones larger velocity than deeper ones that specific layer might not be recorded it might it will not be recorded you cannot detect it okay okay yeah so those are these two images are basically from from critical refractions if you ask me where is exactly is critical uh where is my for for example for this one where is the critical here is critical after this distance that's critical one yes that's critical two after this distance this overcomes the energy from the critical or the refracted energy from third layers overcome becomes the first before the critical energy from the second layer but and doctor, one thing i'm but yeah. doctor when you have the slope uh, two and slope one which you are matched to each others and uh, meet in one point is this not the uh, crossover this is crossover yeah but you are determined this is a critical distance no no sorry <laughs> that was my mistake that's not critical this is crossover critical oh. is somewhere here Critical is here, somewhere here. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. okay, that's fine. Yeah, Doctor, sorry, I have maybe I got, yeah. the third question, the third question, and sorry for making it noisy. No problem, me. we still have time. Uh, uh, the sensor, like the sensor, the sensor, how can they have this mind to detect uh, after they refracted this wave? Can you be, go back of the jump board? Jump board, let me see, yes. See the sensor. How can be detected these waves like that? Uh, Vertically, they are mines or like what? Mm. No, they are very sensitive. They have a magnet inside, and the magnet is surrounded by a coil. So the magnet, or either one of them, is inertia. It can move. It can shake with the ground. The other is in inertia. It's stable. So whenever there is a shaking of a magnet and a coil, even small shaking, even very minimum, even me walking nearby, they will shake. The ground shakes. Okay. So the ground shakes, shaking within the ground, that's an energy. That's, that's a seismic wave. I'm generating seismic waves. Mm -hmm. They travel everywhere. They travel deep into the ground. And as we know, whenever there is a change in velocity, the energy either refract, reflects, and those refractions, some part of the energy gets back to the sensor and get recorded. Yeah, but sometimes Doctor will be when you have the thickness of the layers is the much maybe the shaking will be the loses of the energy of this shaking. Yeah, the definitely there is a lose of energy. And yes. that's what there is a lose of energy. There is maybe the reading will the, maybe the reading is not comes like uh the perfect what you want in the, uh, in the that's that's great that's how is it geology is or geophysics is not um always perfect <laughs> there are noises there are limitations oh, okay. so i cannot i cannot hit a hammer here and they expect that my energy will go to my bella <laughs> no. <Exactly>. yeah yeah <laughs> That's the reason yani, I'm, I'm not expecting, at least if I detonate a big bomb here, a big explosive, then the energy will go to the Ma'bela, even if it will exceed Ma'bela. Exactly, exactly. Okay. Yani, that's how, it, this is, depends on the energy. Large earthquake, they even happen in Iran, we receive the energy. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. So for at least for this case, the geophone spacing is three meters. Three meter, three meter, three meter. And from source to here, three meter, three meter, three meter, three meter, and so on. Mm, to be recorded yeah. uh, perfect and easy. 
Yes, this is not big, large distance. And if I hammer somewhere here, the energy get received here at Ju phone number 12. Okay. So they are just 12 Ju phone. And the spacing, as I mentioned here, in uh, the spacing is three meters. Spacing is three meters. So the distance, distance from source to this first Ju phone is three meters. Distance from Ju phone two to source is how much is then? From Ju phone two to source. Six. Six. That's true. And that's how is it? So these are the, just the Ju phone. This is not distance. It's also distance if we know the spacing between Ju phones. So the Ju phone spacing is uh, three meters, based on the information you are you are provided with. So uh, make finally some, I mean, what do you think is the geology? Make uh, a geologic column. First layer is what do you think is it? Based on the information you are given here in this table. There are, this is part of it, but if you go to the slides. Um, oops, discard. So the last slide gives you much more uh, rock types compared with the velocity range we expect in these rocks. Uh, and the slides are available in module. So I leave you on your own. I expect that you will work. You are allowed to work in groups, uh, get help from your friends. But submission is individual submissions. Each, each person should submit one uh, assignment and uh, good luck i stop here and um, i think it's your part to work uh, extend the submission till uh, saturday let me stop recording i send you the review